Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It is your girl, Brittany Jade, and today we are going to be decorating and getting everything set up for my son TJ's first bee day party. This is a bee themed inspired party and I'm gonna have tons of DIYs and cool decor pieces for you guys. It's going to be a ton of fun. I hope that you all really enjoy it. If you do, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. And also, if you're not already, please make sure to hit the little red subscribe button so that you don't miss any videos from me. And let's go ahead and get on into today's video. So the first piece that I'm gonna be showing you guys is this DIY three-tiered tray. I got all of these items from the Dollar Tree. It is just the three votive glass candle holders and two of those stove top burners. It actually came two in one pack for a dollar and then a little candle holder that's glass. I'm gonna start off by painting all of these items white so that they are nice and flat. I gave it two different coats of paint and this was so easy. It's spray painted really easily. And then I'm going to take my E6000 glue here and I'm going to start by gluing the two bottoms of candle holders together. This is going to serve as my dividers between my three tiered tray. So I don't recall specifically how I was inspired to do a bee-themed birthday party. I think it was something I saw on Pinterest and once I saw it, I absolutely fell in love. I only selected the theme for the party about three weeks before the actual day and we are in a pandemic right now so I knew that we weren't going to be having a really big party. It's just going to be close family members, immediate family members, that kind of thing. So less than 10 people, but I still wanted to make it special and get some decor pieces set up. So I was really excited to be able to utilize a lot of these DIYs and items that I picked up from my local Dollar Tree, as well as some things that I got at Amazon. So anything that I can, I'll have linked down in the description box for you guys or anything that I forget, please comment and let me know and I'll be sure to get you as much information as I can but I am definitely a mama on a budget who still likes to have things look really cute. I saw a bunch of these three tiered trays and I've actually wanted one for a really long time, but they're really expensive. They run anywhere between like 30 and $50 at like home goods and online. So I was really excited that I was able to recreate this one for $6. And I feel like for what I used it for to hold the cupcakes, it turned out beautifully and I really loved it. This next craft is a honeycomb flower pot and this was also a DIY inspired by Pinterest and I did get all of these items at the Dollar Tree. I just rounded up these two glass pots and this wood, I think it's like threaded spool or something. It was in the craft section with the other string and yarn, but basically what I'm going to do is take my hot glue gun and I'm going to wrap this rope all the way around the flower pot. I think that this gives this kind of like a country cottage feel and it does make it look like an actual beehive, which I thought was really cute. These flower pots served as some center and, and end pieces for the main table display and I just felt like wrapping them in this yarn gave them a little bit more dimension. It made them look a little bit more fun and I just really loved the way that it turned out. So this is a little tedious and you do have to work really fast with the hot glue because it does dry really quickly and I learned that about halfway through that I could only go so far with the glue while placing the yarn but you're just going to want to wrap that around the vase as closely as possible to the previous and go all the way up. I think this entire process took me about 20 minutes or so, uh, but I really love the way that it looked at the end. Mm -hmm. 
So I had some of this black and white buffalo check ribbon left over from Christmas and I felt like this would look really, really cute wrapped around the top just to kind of cover that line of demarcation from where I stopped wrapping the yarn in the top of the vase. It kind of hit it and it just gave it a little extra flair. This does have wire inside the ends of this yarn so I was trying to figure out a way to make it look nice but I ended up just cutting it shorter which I really like. I think it made it look very cute. So this was me just utilizing something that I already had. Now I wanted to make some little bumblebees so my daughter has a bunch of these little puff balls around the house. We use them for like arts and crafts, that kind of thing. So I took two yellow puffs. I used the hot glue gun to glue them together. And then I did a black puff ball at the top and I just fluffed out the little bee body. And then I took one of those little wire fuzzy sticks. I wrapped it around my finger to kind of give it the same size as the bee. And this will serve as the stripe. So as you guys can see, this is like a little puff ball bee. And I thought that these were super super cute I did make some in large size like this and then I also used mini puff balls and then I did have some white lace tool that I just cut into a rectangular shape and twisted around there to work or serve as the wings so I just used a little bit of hot glue gun be careful with your hot glue because it is really hot you guys and there are my little bees and I just went ahead and glued one of these little bees onto the vase and I thought this was so cute. Let me know down below what y'all think. I did use some vinyl. I just had some black vinyl, some scrap vinyl laying around. So I cut that into the shape of a door and that is what I stuck right on there to make it look like a beehive with like little bees coming in. So I thought this was really adorable. So this next project is for all of my Cricut mamas out there or Cricut daddies, I don't know. <laughs> I really loved having matching birthday shirts. All my kids, we usually get matching shirts or matching outfits, but this year it just was not in the budget to spend $25 per shirt. But I did get a Cricut this year because I started my small Etsy business and I have been loving making different things. So I've experimented with making a few different clothing apparel items. So I figured, you know what? I can make my own birthday shirts for a lot less. So I picked up each of these Bella Canvas t-shirts for $6 on Amazon. I just used my design space to create the words that I wanted and use the font that I wanted and it was so easy. I already had the HTV and I had all this stuff on me already so all I had to do was get the shirts and I just went ahead and ironed it on and I thought that these looked really cute. They look super high quality. These Bella Canvas shirts for only six dollars they were so soft and I just thought that this turned out adorably and I will definitely be doing this again. Hello Cricut. Thank you for making my Christmas shirts. I'm so excited. I absolutely love my heat press and I'm so glad that I made that investment this year. So I used to always buy birthday cakes from the bakery at any grocery store, but recently, the last two years, I have been making birthday cakes, which I think just makes it a little bit more special, and obviously, it saves money in the bank. I picked up this boxed cake mix from the Dollar Tree, and I ordered this spherical ball baking pan on Amazon, and I'll definitely have this link down below for you guys, but this is how you would create like a circular shaped cake if that's what you wanted. I felt like this was super easy. I did just use like one half and that was perfect for creating the beehive smash cake. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these put into my oven and I'll let them bake and cool overnight and then I will move on to the next craft. So 
So if you guys have not seen Novalee's third superhero birthday party, I'll definitely have that linked up in the cards for you guys, as well as down below in the description box. But if there is one thing I learned from that video, it is to invest in a balloon blower. You guys need this if you are doing balloon garlands or trying to blow up a bunch of balloons. This was such an awesome investment. I think it was $20 on Amazon or something like that. I got it because it is a necessity for birthday balloons. I also picked up this balloon kit of black and yellow different balloons and I got this on Amazon I think it was about eight dollars or so again I'll have everything that I used in this video linked down below for you guys but I have a full tutorial on my daughter's superhero birthday on how to create a balloon garland super easy but I'm also going to try and describe as easily as possible on this video as well how you can do that so I like to start by tying two balloons together and then I have a string that I will tie the balloons through and I will wrap them around each balloon in like a circular motion to secure it and I will just continue to do that so I'll grab alternating balloons like a black and a yellow or a big and a small or something like that I try and make it uh, like a variety and I will tie them together and then I will just go through the same thing loop-de-looping it through the string now the string is what is going to serve as your length of how long you want your garland and the fullness is just going to depend on how many balloons you tie together in in the beginning I started off just tying two balloons together but then you can see here that I started by tying three and four balloons together and then wrapping them up. Okay, so the best way for me to describe how to do this is by taking two balloons and you wanna do like opposing sizes and colors. If I'm gonna grab a black balloon, I'll do a yellow and if I'm gonna grab a big, I grab a small, something like that so that it's contrasted when it's put together in one way or another. So then you're gonna take these two, you're gonna just loop them around each other a few times to get a good seal how you want it. Boom, there you go. So you've got four balloons now. So now you can take your string of balloons and you're gonna wanna push them on as tightly as you can and you'll just wrap the rope around. This is the easiest way for me. I wrap it around each balloon once and there we go. And then I can add balloons where I see that there's like a bald spot. Like I see that there's a big bald spot right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two balloons in there. And then when I see where I see the bald spot, I'm just going to like twist the balloons in, get a nice loop de loop. With my balloons. And there, now I have filled that spot. So it's starting to look fuller, so I'm just gonna keep on with the rest of the balloons. have white sheer curtains for those two windows there and the white sheer netting that you guys see behind the wall actually came from my daughter's toddler bed she has a house bed and I had gotten these sheer backdrops to tie along the top of them and it actually just worked perfectly to be able to use them as like a backdrop for this it just kind of gave it some added dimension to the wall and I really loved the way that everything turned out So this was probably one of my favorite DIYs. There are some things that I would recommend doing differently, but overall I absolutely loved this piece and it was so inexpensive, you guys. All I did was grab a pack of popsicle sticks from the craft section at the Dollar Tree and you get 100 per pack, so all I needed was one package. I did grab two, but I ultimately didn't even need them. And what I did was try to replicate a hexagon shape. Now something I would do differently was I would print out a hexagon shape and then just trace the popsicle sticks over it because as you'll see, some of them didn't really turn out like asymmetrical or perfect. Um, but I think that 
for the overall look and the end result, I feel like it you got you got the gist of what I was trying to do. But I wanted this to look like honeycombs and I wanted to hang it up on the lace backdrop for a photo. And I felt like it looked so cute in the end, you guys. This was definitely so inexpensive and such a cool little additive to the backdrop where we had TJ's crib and where we took a lot of photos. And I just felt like it was so cute. Look at it up there hanging. This was perfect. And then once I got like a good base, I could actually add more honeycombs from it hanging there. And I just hung it up with some of that string. And then I also did hot glue on some of those bees that I made. So I feel like this space was one of my favorites in the entire party. So we didn't do a traditional cake for the rest of the guests that were going to be coming. I did have cupcakes, but I also wanted to have other kinds of treats. So I saw these bee cookies on Pinterest and I thought they were so cute. I just had to make them. I picked up these candy melts from Walmart. I think they were $1.97 each and I picked up a container of the Nutter Butter cookies. I just melted the yellow candy melts there which was super easy to do dipped the cookies in and placed them on a parchment lined baking sheet so that they could cool down and harden over the cookies you guys these turned out really cute um, but I will show you how they were somewhat of a Pinterest mom fail also but you know what they were made with love and that's all that matters and I think that the thought was there and you guys got the overall message when I was done with the cookies while the first part of the cookies were cooling off in the deep freezer, I did go ahead and start icing the cake. This was the day of the party, so I had picked up this yellow icing mix from Amazon, and I'll have that link down below definitely for you guys, but this turned out a really nice sun bright yellow. I went ahead and put the icing into a piping bag with a big circular tip because I wanted to recreate the look of an actual honeycomb. So I used the bottom half of one half of those little cakes and then I put the second full half on because I did not want a circular shape. I wanted it to kind of look like a hamburger or like a half of a honeycomb. And I just went all the way around and I did have a little bit of icing difficulties because I am not a baker. You guys know I love to cook. If you're not new to my channel, then you see my what I eat in a day Wednesday videos. Those are kind of like my thing here on this channel. I love to cook. I love creating new recipes. I love trying different things, but baking is like a whole different ball game, you guys. But overall, I think that this turned out really cute and I really like the way that it looked and there's something about a homemade cake that just makes it really special especially for your kids so this is definitely something that I plan to start doing I obviously love like the really nice bakery cakes that just look super beautiful and aesthetic because they're done by a professional but I just felt like this was really cute and it was fun for me to get out of my comfort zone and do something that I hadn't tried before which was this fondant which was a piece of work you guys if y'all have never worked with fondant before definitely come to the table with some patience because you guys it is a whole piece of work but I did manage to get the little beehive door cut out there and I wanted to have little beehive trails so I just cut cut tiny thin pieces and kind of just went free handed, no rhyme or reason. And I picked up these little candy bees from Amazon and have placed them around the cup. They are just like sugar bees and they just added a really cute dimension to the beehive. So I really loved the way that this turned out. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this cake and also let me know if you have ever worked with fondant before because I learned something new, you guys. So with the rest of these cookies, I pulled them out of the freezer after I was done with the cake and I used the same strips that I used for those little bee trails and I just went ahead and made the bee stripes and then I used candy eyes to put little eyes on the bees. You guys will see here in a second. And then I used the white candy melts to just kind of make a wing shape. I had no rhyme or reason and these were not perfect y'all, but I thought that they were really cute and 
if I had known better, I would have known to do these the day before the party instead of waiting until the day of the party to actually do them so that I could have taken my time with them. But overall, I thought these were super cute and a great addition to everything. Here is the final table spread and here is all of the decor. I got those little gold trays also from the Dollar Tree and here is our little backdrop where we are going to do the cake and everything. I know that a lot of important events are getting either canceled or postponed and it is especially sad in the world right now with everything going on with the coronavirus. I was so grateful and thankful for our closest family, our siblings and our parents to come to the birthday party and some of us did wear masks which was totally fine. I'm just grateful that we were all able to get together and celebrate little TJ and I just want to extend some encouragement if you're feeling sad or if you're feeling like things are different this year because I totally felt that way too. It was so nice to get together with family and it just really emphasizes the importance of human connection and just being able to celebrate loved ones together and give people hugs and kisses. It's just something that we definitely take for granted and the coronavirus pandemic has definitely brought that to light but I really appreciate you guys for watching this video today and I hope that you guys enjoyed it and got some great tips if a bee theme party is something you're wanting to go for. Are you gonna put him in his little bee shirt? Are you? Happy birthday to you. I don't want it on my oh, fingers. Yeah, the yummy? Uh, I, he does, I don't want it on my fingers, he says. No! <laughs> uh, what are you doing? Oh, he's in the good part. Yay! 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 They're all they're all the same. It's just different colored wrappers. There you go. Thank you so much for checking out today's video and sharing TJ's first birthday with us. He is just such a joy to have in our lives and we feel so blessed. I really enjoyed throwing this party together and I enjoyed all of the DIYs and I hope you guys did as well. Make sure that you guys hit that red subscribe button so that you don't miss any upcoming videos from me and let me know down in the comments or over on my Instagram if you guys happen to recreate any of these DIY crafts and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.